Hey y'all, in this tutorial I want to show you how I do my cheat buffalo plaid. What you need for this is a piece of sublimation. I printed this, um, I'm going to do a true 32, so I printed the top half of um, the cup and it's going to be two pieces that I'm going to line up and put together. So here's my buffalo plaid sublimation. What you're also going to need is glitter HTV, okay? I like to use the like rainbowy opal um, color to it. They have one that's just plain white. I feel like the opal one gives it a little more bling. It's a little more glittery looking. So that's the one I'm using. Um, I also highly, highly recommend um, a paper cutter because uh, you're going to need straight lines. So that's going to help big time. And obviously your cup. Um, what I also am using is the high temperature tape. This is what you would use on your heat press, which another thing you need, heat press. So, oh, and also I have my heat gun and a glove because sometimes the cup will get hot um, when you're, you're putting it on there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my HTV. And I'm just going to cut the whole sheet of paper. And it's just a rough approximation. You're going to cut away the excess. Let me make sure I got it. And then also, I forgot to mention this, you need, which I think I have, yeah. You need a Teflon sheet, okay? Because what you're going to do, and as you can see, this one has some um, glue already on it. So I'm gonna just add some more to it. What you're going to do is, you're going to peel off the carrier sheet on your HTV. So this is my glittered side. This is my adhesive side, right? The one that's going to stick. The side that's going to stick, I'm going to put on to the Teflon sheet. And let me turn you so you can see with me here. So this is the glittered side. The glitter side is what I'm working with because the sublimation I'm going to put onto the glitter. Okay, my heat press is at 400 degrees and I'm going to press it for one minute. Okay, so my one minute is up. I'm going to peel off my sublimation. Now, it is stuck to the sheet. I advise letting it cool before you try to peel it. Otherwise, it's going to peel back, stick on itself, and you're not gonna be able to work with it. So we're gonna let this cool for just a few seconds. Okay, while that is cooling down, I wanna talk about my cup. So my cup, I know everybody swears by prepping your cups. I don't prep my cups, ever, um, unless I'm doing this. So I want the sublimation to have a good stick. So I'm going to use uh, sandpaper. Mine is, I think 150, 120, 150. And I'm just going to scuff up my cup. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go get one of my microfiber rags and I'm going to wipe it down with alcohol. Okay, so my cup is scuffed up. It'll give it a little more to stick to. It is cold, so now it is safe to peel. And as you can see, it just comes right off. 
boom, just like that. And now what I'm going to do is use my paper cutter to cut this with nice straight lines. Okay, so let's work on cutting this. My blade is kind of dull on this. So I'm going to have to make that the bottom because I had to hit paper cut it or cut it with my scissors. See, first ones are a little hard just because they're bigger and you can't quite line them up. Those side pieces come out much nicer. So, there's my first piece. Now let's do the second. So, remember how I said this was going to be the bottom? So, I want to line this up to know that'll be the bottom so that they match up. Because I also didn't, being the first cut and it's kind of... Hard to measure where I, I cut some of it off, like a small little sliver. So that's also another reason why it's going to be on the bottom. See, in that one I left too much. So... And then the bottom, like I said, this was going, I need to cut off the slightest little sliver of it to make sure it's even. Which I did. And now the sides, those are easy because once you have the top and bottom, it's way easier to line up. So 
So there you have it, my two pieces. Now let's show you how to put them onto your cup and make this a masterpiece. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I have my cup and I'm gonna remember which side's the bottom. When I line this up, I'm going to leave the tiniest, I mean, almost immeasurable space from the rim of the cup. And I don't know if you can even see, it's the smallest little piece because when I put my epoxy on, I don't want it to be up to the rim. So it's a very, very tiny, tiny, okay. And then what I'm gonna do is, so I have that there. I'm gonna balance it real quick. And I'm going to use my hot tape. And I dropped my, left my scissors over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is measure a piece big enough to try to do this. Oh, I have glitter on the bottom of mine. Let me make sure it's clean. Okay, so when I line it up, let's see if I can get you to see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to use the tape. Line it up again because mine fell. Tiniest little sliver. And I'm going to use my tape to hold it in place. Okay. As you can see, I wrapped it around the top and I left plenty for it to wrap around the bottom. And now I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side. And I wish I could show you a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push it and make it as tight as I can. Okay. So there is my first half. What I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and use my heat gun to get this to seal down. That way, if it does stretch or there's any imperfections to it, I can do use my second piece to kind of make up for that. So what I'm gonna do, I have my glove because the cup will get hot. I need to find a different glove. This one I don't have very much mobility in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is use my heat gun. And make sure you do like, I usually do about two of the strips and then I push it down because the edges are gonna wanna curl. So I just make sure I push it down and get it stuck to the cup. And then we'll go to the next one. Because as you can see, it's wrinkling up against the tape. It's wanting to go a little further than what the tape is allowing. So that's one of those spots where I'm going to have to, when I paste my second one, kind of work with.
Now I'm going to take your tape, that tape off. Obviously, it's metal. You can eat metal up. Down here is kind of hot, so I couldn't touch it with that hand. All right, just make sure it's well pushed down. Okay, so there you see it. Glittery, perfect buffalo plaid and in a fraction of the time. Okay, so now my next one. Ooh, cup is still hot. Now my next one. I have the smallest little sliver of white and it's driving me nuts. Okay, so now I have that one trimmed down and I just had a little piece of white at the top that was bugging me. So let me grab some tape, which I could probably reuse the tape I had before. And I'm gonna line it up. As you can see, well, once I push it down, it's gonna line up perfectly. And now this side, I always do this, I always make it a little big um, because I never know how much it's gonna stretch and maybe that's why it's a little bigger than normal is it stretched a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm still gonna tape it just like that and I'm gonna hit it with an X-Acto knife later on. And you could even just HTV, like you could just seal it over top if you really wanted. But that makes this one a little smaller and that bugs me because it bugs me. So I'm gonna hit it with an X-Acto knife and I'll show you how I do that when I'm done. Okay, so same thing, let's heat it up and press it down. I don't know if you noticed I actually did the one with the tape because I want to make sure that one lines up so I did these first two rows um, where the edge is and I mean there's like no gap like it's perfect can't even tell there's a seam there
Make sure you're pressing down the top and bottom rim very, very well. You don't want your epoxy to get underneath there. Sometimes if I find a spot or two where I didn't push it down very well, I will go over the entire cup's edge and re-push it down just to make sure. And I'm actually gonna remove this piece of tape because that edge right there where the tape was isn't tight. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take my tape off of that last little strip. If I wanted to, I could leave that. It's perfectly fine. Um, but I can see that this strip is smaller than the other two strips. So do I risk it and exacto knife it and what if it's not straight? Or do I leave it like it is? I'm Nikki. I, I exacto knife it. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is not have a rubber hand. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay, so what I'm going to do now, and again, this is HTV, it's kind of hard to cut. So make sure you press hard. Okay. I peeled that strip off. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to trace the exact same spot again. If I peel back that top one very easily, you don't want it to stretch. Peel off that second, Oops, see, right there. There we go. And now we have the perfect lineup. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back around, sorry, that's my, <laughs> that's my turner. Um, I'm gonna go back around this bottom edge and I'm gonna reheat and repress. And if you see any places in here that are kind of bubbly, that means that it's not um, adhered to the cup. So go and hit that with a heat gun and press it back down. And you can do this. Ooh, hot. Same exact thing. 
Like there's my, I know you probably can't see it. Right there's my seam. So make sure that that, yeah. All right. And I think my top looks pretty good. I think that's good. So there you guys go. Look at that beautiful, sparkly, perfect buffalo plaid and in a fraction of the time. So what I'm going to do now is let it cool because it's still kind of hot. Um, I'm going to let it cool and I'm going to use painter's tape to tape off this top half. And then I'm going to go spray paint gold down here. Um, and then we'll come back and we're going to epoxy method. Um, and put on a chunky gold on the bottom. So there you guys have it. Look at that beautiful buffalo plaid. Okay, y'all, so spray paint is dry. What I'm going to use is Elegance from Yaya's, aka Assassin Craft. Um, it's a mix of like a holographic gold, it has some white, some um, regular like gold inside there. It's my go-to for chunky gold on the bottom. So I have my epoxy here, let me turn my thing on. Um, if you want this to go even faster, I would recommend doing the fast set epoxy from Counterculture. Um, because what you're going to be able to do is your decal is going to be able to go on to the um, buffalo plaid within one coat of epoxy. So what you could do is use the fast coat um, or the fast set epoxy. That way you're in and out in like two hours. This whole buffalo plaid cup is just gonna change everything. You will be popping them out left and right. And I shouldn't have put this under here yet. Okay, so let me get this spread on there. Real thin coat, don't need a lot of epoxy. I say that and then I glob it on. Okay, so epoxy is on. And this isn't a super chunky that I'm using, um, so it's going to be a little bit easier to go around the bottom. And I actually go a little bit above the line where my um, HTV is because I don't want you to be able to see that it ends there. So I keep this a little higher 
and then I'll start to ombre it out. That's the one good thing about the True 32, like you have so much space up top that when you ombre, you're not losing decal space. Okay, and then I think I've done this before, but I don't have a real tactful way to put it on the bottom. I just kind of throw it on there. Let me get my gloves on. That's still falling. Okay, so now I'm just going to pat down my glitter so that it's less sanding that I have to do later. very lightly around the bottom edge. Okay. I'm going to watch it as it comes back around. Make sure I don't have any popping up. It's good to go so I'm gonna let it sit there um, this is regular epoxy not the fast set so I'm gonna let it sit there and dry for at least six to eight hours if I had my fast set um, which comes in tomorrow I could have this done in two so there you have it y'all that is the buffalo plaid